Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and welcome to Crafting with Kathy. In today's class, we're going to do a glossy card. Not quite a scene, more of a montage. And um, we're gonna be featuring stamps out of the new Be Arty Time Flies range. So these are a clear rubber stamp. They've got some great designs. So in the new range, there is um, the metal plate, Time Flies, and then I'm actually gonna use one of my favorites of theirs, which is the Vamp Stamp from the Vampire Rose Collection. So those are stamps we're gonna be using today. Ink pads, we're going to be using the Collider Colors. And I wanted some earthy, grungy colors, so we're going to be using some Cappuccino Delight and Autumn Leaves, and then adding a bit of color to our Time Flies bird with the Royal Satin. We'll be using Versamark, uh, <laughs> Versamark ink for embossing, and the Catherine Pooler Midnight ink for our basic stamping, because it dries so well on the gloss card. Okay, so to do our actual stamping, we're going to use a stamping platform on our gloss card, just because we're using some big stamps and also because it's quite slippery stamping onto gloss, so this will hold our stamp steady. So we'll pop our card in, position our Time Flies bird where we would like him. So I'm gonna put him down quite low because I wanna be able to put a quote up the top there. Okay, make sure my magnets aren't gonna get in the way of him. Okay, pick him up with the platform. Make sure my card's still sitting where I want it to be. And let's ink him up with the Catherine Puller Midnight. Now remember, this is a very squishy ink pad, so just a tap. Just a tap gives you plenty of ink. Do make sure you've covered the whole stamp, but yes, just the lightest of taps. Close our platform and press down. Now sometimes the card can lift, can lift up with the stamp as you lift it up. That's okay, we'll still be able to peel it off. But it hasn't, we haven't inked quite well enough there, so I'm just gonna make sure we're still sitting in the corner neatly, which we are, and I'm just gonna ink up a little bit more around that edge there. I wasn't quite as good as I wanted. This is one of the lovely things about stamping in a platform is that you can just re-stamp, and as long as your card hasn't moved, it will stamp just in the same spot. Still not 100% happy with the edge there. I mustn't be putting enough pressure on it. Let me just ink that edge up a little bit again. And give it a really good press. Much better, that's got the edges that I wanted. Excellent. Okay, now I've already made a mask out of the bird that I've cut, stamped and cut on a post-it note and cut out. I don't, you don't need to do the solid areas and you do need behind the chain there. So I've just cut that bit of chain off. Anything that's solid image, you don't need to mask. So you can just cut that away. You'll also notice that I didn't actually mask, I haven't actually cut the mask big enough to cover all the little fronds sticking out of his tail. That's mainly laziness on my part. <laughs> I've decided that that was just too much work to cut all those little fine bits and I'm going to be happy if my background shows through those. Bit of a compromise there. <laughs> so now let's just give him a little bit of a dry because I want to be able to put the mask over the top without smudging him at all. And then we're going to put the big metal plate background stamp over the top. Should do it. Let's pop our mask on. Okay, now this I don't need magnets for this next one because the stamp is going to cover the whole card. It's quite a large stamp. That's going to go over the whole thing. Let's just move that into position. Now I'm going to line my card up with a couple of the measurements on the platform so that I know, because I can't use the magnets, I need to know where I've put the card in case I have to, because the card will pick up when I, you'll see. <laughs> as I put, I'll explain as I go. As I press this on, 
see how the card picks up with it because there's no magnets holding it down. So I need to know where I had positioned that card so that I can put it back in the same place. So I'd lined it up with the two centimeters and four and a half centimeters, I do believe. Let's just close it over without actually touching it just to see whether I'm right there. I think I could actually raise it up slightly. Let's have a look again. Nice, okay. So we're just gonna leave that sit there. We can't put the magnets on it. And let's ink up our wonderful metal plate stamp. This is a gorgeous stamp, if you like grungy, rustic things, which I do. So tapping over the whole stamp. Remember, don't press. You don't want to get a lot of ink on the backing area of the stamp. We just want it on the actual design. Let's lay it down. And we've got a, it's a big stamp. We want to make sure we've pressed over the whole image. I was actually doing this uh, I've, I've already got one dried ready to go for the next stage and when I was playing with that I couldn't get the stamp to stamp clearly I'm thinking what's going wrong and then realized I had a magnet in the way that wasn't letting the lid close completely it wasn't the stamps fault at all but I'm just making sure we give it a really good press and again it's going to stick to it we can just very carefully grab that and peel it off and because it's a grungy stamp if you've got a bit of smudging it's not going to matter. Let's clean that stamp and tuck our platform to one side. We'll bring our platform into use again shortly. So let's just pop the magnets in just to hold all that together and pop it away. Right, so now with our card, let's lift our mask off and have a look at what we've got. So we've got our Time Flies bird with the metal background. As I said, I've already, I would either have to leave this sit for a while or heat set it. So I have already done one that I've heat set ready to go with our colouring. So we're going to pop the mask back on the bird so that we can do all our background grungy colouring without colouring him in at the same time. Now we're going to do our colouring with our brushes and our Collider Colour inks. We're starting off with Autumn Leaves. And I'm going to start off with the yellowy colour. You'll notice with the Collider Colour ink pad that I actually, out, let me move that a bit more closer to me there, actually going to line the pad up with the lid so that I can see at a glance what colour's what. So let's pick up this yellow, start off on the edge of our card and smudge in. Now I'm not going to worry if it's patchy, we're wanting a grungy card. So for once I'm not trying to get great blending. Oh no, you say, not blended, but we just want to get coverage of colour and then we're actually going to be doing a mixture of pouncing and stippling to get more colour on in a ragged sort of way. So just getting the yellow as a bit of a base. Turn around so you can see what we're doing. Now we're going to pick up um, some brown and let's switch to the cappuccino now. Now in the cappuccino, the darkest brown on the cappuccino is the same as the brown on the autumn leaves. But I think I want some of these lighter browns. Let's pick up some of this one for a start. I'm going to come back in with my yellow brush and just smoosh that out a bit. actual dots, I just want smudginess. Which colour am I using? That one, middle one. Middle one, there we go. That's even with the lid to look at. Okay, let's do some dots out here. Get another brush in, smudge them out a bit. So I'm really doing it quite random. I'm not following any particular pattern with the blocks or anything. Let's switch to a deeper brown brush and pick up some of this colour here. Now I'm going to start to try and meld the colours in a bit more together. So 
So rather than definite blobs, I'm doing more of a stippling. And I'm taking a little bit of colour off on the scrap paper first, so we don't get it too dark. But I will like it quite dark around our bird, I think. Let's do a bit more around there. So we can actually create quite a good shadow around him while we've still got the mask in place. I'm trying not to cover all of the yellow. The idea of doing a grungy background like this is to show you a different way of using the brushes rather than the usual circles that we use um, or the smudging to get really soft images. This way by actually doing more of your traditional stippling we're getting more of this mottled background which is going to work really well with this stamp. Now I think we need some green in there. So let's go back to our autumn leaves pad and the green on the end. And we'll tap some green around. Again, I'm trying to make sure I don't cover all of the yellow areas. It'd be very easy just to go over those and end up losing those lighter areas. Of course we could also graduate the colours, you could do it with sort of green, yellow browns and green browns over going from one side of the card to the other. I was just aiming for just a general mottliness. Now let's get our darker brown again and this time we're going to go around the edge of the card with our pouncing type action that we normally do with the scenes, just to deepen off the outer edge of the card. I'm quite liking it even with the mask in place. It's going to look fabulous when we take that off. Just pouncing all the way around the outer edge of the card. Remember, turn your card around so it always stays at a good angle for you because when you're pouncing, you want the end of the brush to be facing off the card. Another way of doing it, another way of another pattern of colour that we could have done is actually have left it quite light around the bird rather than putting a shadow around him and then coloured him in with deeper colours and the lightness around him would then have created a contrast. So there's certainly several different patterns of colours that you could use to get some variation in this same card. down this side and we'll be done with our pouncing. Right, okay. I like that with a little bit of green in there, not too much but just a bit. And we're going to switch to our Royal Satin ink pad. Although we might still keep the yellow from the autumn leaves on the go. And take our mask off. Oh, he looks very stark, doesn't he? Again, you could leave it like that, actually. That looks pretty fabulous, too. But I'm not going to, because I like adding lots more colour, which is going to make Matthew smile, because I can't resist adding heaps of colour. So let's get our yellowy brush. And this time I am wanting to do some softer circles. I'm just going to use a bit of paper towel to hold onto that, so I don't put my fingerprints marks onto the card. And because I want this soft, I'm going to start circling before I reach the card. Now I'm going to bring into play our smaller size brushes. 
So I've got a brown and a blue. I also want to grab, and a moment ago I dropped all of my brush on the floor, so I'm just gonna grab the colors I want. What have we got? Got an orange and a purple, perfect. Right, let's add some orange from our autumn leaves pad to his beak. Now with your little brush, just place the colour in where you want it. I'm going to turn my card around so I can place it to the other edge of the beak. And I'm just going to get that yellow brush again and just pounce a few times just to soften the edge of that. Now we're going to do the same sort of technique on his hat with some blue. Let's come into our royal satin pad. So remember you've got to put the, when you're putting pressure on the brush, you'll get a, an edge to it. So we must make sure that, that goes to the edge of our stamp design. Which means you have to turn the card around. And once I've got less ink on the brush, I can just drag that a bit to soften it a bit. Turn the card around and we'll do some on the other side of the hat. Pick up a bit of blue if you want to. Touch it off on your scrap paper so that you haven't got as much intensity on the brush. And we'll do a bit down in that area as well. Give our brush a bit of a wipe. Now remember, don't scrunch the brush because you'll lose that nice edge to it. giving it a really nice little highlight in there. Now we're going to come in with more of a plummy tone and start adding some shadows. I'm looking at where the plates in his tail overlap to see where to pop the shadows. I think we're overlapping out that way so let's pop some along this edge here. You can see you can get quite a crisp edge with the brushes, but then you can drag the colour to soften it, or you can use a bigger brush just to dab in there to soften that a bit. That's just a patting action, just trying to soften it, not to take away from it. And as I'm doing this, I'm sort of looking at the card and what we're creating and thinking, what else is it going to need? Am I going to need something to tie in the plum and the blue together? I think I am. I think having the, the tail in one colour and the hat in another, there's going to need to be something to tie those together. But I have to say, I'm absolutely loving that background. Shows that sometimes it's good to not be all nice and smoothly blended. Sometimes it's good just to go smooshy and pouncy. Okay, what else are we gonna to add to him? What's going to be the bit that'll make this just all work together? I think we're gonna add some darkness down to his belly with the blue and the plummy colours. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the plum on my big brush. Just flatten the brush down so I can get nice and close to my edge there. my yellow brush just to make sure we've got that all nice and softly blended. Okay, still wondering what else we need to do. Actually, maybe some blue in our little bits on his tail is what's going to make the difference. I 
just dab some blue into those little triangles and hearts or diamonds and hearts that we've got there. That might be just what it needed. That's better. That's just given a bit more blue over to the, this side as well as having it on the hat. I think that's great. Maybe also just a little bit of blue shaded around these cogs. And place it in, drag it out a little bit. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's do some more of that. I did have a plan before starting this card. Matthew's looking at me like, what are you doing here? I did have a plan, but I'm just coming up with more ideas as I'm working with the stamps. It's just giving me more and more ideas. And I think Matthew's saying we need to wrap this up and I still need to do some embossing. So I better hurry up and stop this blending. Okay, we're gonna leave him like that. I just think that looks so good. Let's give him a dry and then we'll do our embossing with our vamp stamp. So stand by for the heat gun noise. Again, because of these inks are still wet, if I was to emboss at the moment, the embossing powder would stick everywhere. So I need to get this layer dry so that we can then emboss over the top and have it just where we want it to go. I'll also need a big acrylic block because the vamp stamp is quite a large one. So while I'm drying, I'll get that loaded onto a block. And we've got our black embossing standing by. So let's give that a wipe with our anti-static pad. Again, trying to make sure that the embossing powder only sticks to where we want it to stick to. Grab our Versamark ink and our lovely big vamp stamp and have a look. Oh no, I was going to use the Time Flies stamp as well. Let's do that first so we know where it's going to fit. So Time Flies. It's going to go across the top. Let's ink that up with the Versamark. Make sure I've got it up the right way. <laughs> it always helps, doesn't it? So I'm going to get the time flies to fit in this block here. And let's pop our black embossing powder on there so we can see where we're going with this. There's my little brush, hiding somewhere. Give it a good tap. Realize I've missed a bit of stamp there. Good thump on the back. All right, now let's work our design around that. So I'm gonna bring a little bit down over the bird's tail a little bit. Another edge of the stamp to bring some in from the side here. Okay, let's get our embossing powder on, see what we've got. as I go. And tap, thump on the back and let's give that a heat. I'm a bit excited about this one. That is quite magic. Oh, 
Awesome. Let's take this out of here so you can get a clearer picture of the colors. Oh, how fabulous does that look? And that's just using our brushes and our inks in a bit of a different way by being not so careful with our blending and actually deliberately pouncing a bit. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us for this one. I've loved this. So this is our some of the B Arty stamps with the Collider Color inks on the gloss card and using our number 10 blending brushes as well. So thank you for being with us and hopefully you join us on our next journey with some more ink fun. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye.